Hey, what's up, church family? Pastor David here, and thank you for joining us. We're so excited that you chose to worship with us. I wanna give a huge shout out to the live watch parties that are happening all over the city, even Daly City, South San Francisco, Pacifica, Oakland. You guys rock. We're so excited for what God is about to do at this time. Hey, we're gonna get ready to worship, so make sure to tune in and let's go. Together, strangers, neighbors, a blood is one. Children of generations of every nation, a kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up. Don't feel no evil Fix your eyes on this one truth God is madly in love with you Take courage, hold on, be strong Remember where your help comes from
give you all the glory, all the praise. Father, you are so good. You are so worthy to be praised. Jesus, everything that you've done for us, everything you continue to do, God, just the simple fact that you died for us is enough to worship you and to tell you how good you are. I just wanna invite you, church, right now, wherever you are, just lift your hands right now if you feel comfortable. These are old acts in the Bible. You could, you could just sit on the floor. You can lift your hands. You can kneel wherever you feel comfortable. And I just want you to tell God right now how good he is. I want you to think about the things that he's done in your life. I want you to go through those times where you didn't think there was hope and remember what God has done. Let's be encouraged this morning. Oh, the saints and angels that bow before your throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing.
glory we lift it up we lift it up to you jesus right now and all of the glory all of the glory is yours it's yours it's yours it's yours all of the glory all of the glory it's yours it's yours it's yours it's yours all of the glory all of the glory is yours it's yours it's yours all of the glory Hey, what's up, church family? Hey, don't you love worship? I love being in the presence of God. And as we sing these songs and we position ourselves to hear from God, He just does something supernatural in our hearts and it's just so amazing. And that one of the ways that we worship at our church is also through the giving of our finances. Generosity is something that doesn't originate from us. It actually starts from the heart of God. Perhaps one of the most famous verses in scripture is John 3, 16, where it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is the one who sets the standard. He is a generous God and he's always caring for all of our needs. And as we give back to God, the reality is we're not giving God something, we're returning what already belongs to him. So every Sunday we celebrate God's generosity, but I also wanna celebrate your generosity. I wanna thank you, City Life Church, for being a people with big vision, big hearts, and the willingness to sow into the dreams that God has placed into our hearts. You guys are amazing. And for those of you who would be watching us from different places and you're like, hey, I don't know that City Life is my church quite yet. Thank you for partnering with us. And our, our goal is always to be a blessing to others. So from the bottom of our hearts, we wanna say thank you. But I wanna pray right now over you over your finances, and uh, we want to ask the Holy Spirit to continue to fulfill His plans in and through our lives. So let me pray a blessing over you. God, we love you, and we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives and through our lives. I thank you for what you're doing with City Life Church, how you continue to pour blessings in and through us. God, you've been so good to us. We want to be a blessing to those, not only just in San Francisco, but all throughout the U.S. and around the world. God, I pray that you'd bless your people today. Prosper them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
Hello, we are so excited. Today we have Elizabeth who is ready to go public with her faith. Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about why you've decided to get baptized today. Um, so to be sincere, I always had God in my life, but I lost a little track of everything. I stopped loving myself and let people treat me the wrong way. When you don't think you're worth being loved, people around you don't either. I went through a painful uh, season recently and I met people who reminded me of the love of Jesus has for me and that made me want the connection again. I wanted to feel this real love again. I never completely disconnected with Jesus, but I'm sure felt alone and lo locked in a cage. I've been participating in a small group at the Nielsen and Lila's house, and that makes me feel so good. Every time I leave their house, I feel God in my heart. I feel God t talking to me. So when they told me about the baptism, I knew I was ready. I knew this is the next step I should take. I want to devote myself to what is really important. I want to get my love for myself back. I want to be forgiven for all the wrong things I did. I want to be a better person. I want to be able to grow and learn every day and all that God has to teach me. I don't want to feel lost or sad anymore. I want to feel free. Thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. Elizabeth, upon a confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's up, City Life family? It's your boy, Pastor Keese here. Excited to continue this uh, new series that we've been on, uh, Whisper, Hearing the Voice of the Holy Spirit. You had Pastor David week one, uh, PJJ last week, the bishop uh, did a good job, and I'm going to hope to uh, continue and follow up with those guys. And so uh, let's jump right in. So um, hope you guys enjoyed last week, PJJ going in, um, really setting a, a solid foundation and, and building some good principles uh, just to remind you, you gave us three solid points. Number one, slow down. Number two, tune out the noise. And number three, lean in. Amen. And I hope you guys uh, took those tips and those uh, strategies and, um, and experience in uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit in a, in a deeper way. Today, um, I want to continue that series uh, with the, the theme, hearing uh, his voice through prayer hearing his voice through prayer. So let's jump right into the word. Let's go to John chapter 14, uh, verse 16. I'm going to kind of launch off of two, two kind of passages that I want to uh, use as a launching pad for the rest of the, the sermon today. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 16. It says, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He, he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't, it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him. Come on, somebody. You know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. It's good stuff right there. One more uh, kind of passage I want to use to launch this thing for today. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere. This is Paul now talking and, and he's praying for the people of, of Ephesus. And he says, again, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. It's a key one. If you got your Bibles or your, your uh, Bible apps, you want to highlight that right there. Thanking God for you. Continuing on, I pray for you constantly. Verse 17, asking God, the glorious father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow. Someone say grow. Come on. So that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Verse 18, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Verse 19, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness, come on, of God's power, the Holy Spirit. For us who believe in him, 
This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in, pl in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Powerful, powerful passage right here. And so my hope is that uh, we're going to unpack this a little bit in, 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 a, in a different way. And my hope is that uh, throughout this uh, sermon that uh, help you with some principles to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit through prayer. Uh, speaking of prayer, let me just pray real quick. Father, we thank you. We thank you for all those uh, that are tuning in, Lord, all over the world. We pray that uh, that you would uh, do what only you could do through your word, God. Let your let seeds be planted. Uh, let water water those seeds. And we know, according to your word, that God and you alone will give the, the increase. So right now we pray and we thank you for our time together. Um, we, we thank you uh, for what you're doing in this house. And we ask you to uh, bless this, uh, bless the word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And so um, let's be real. If we're talking about prayer, talking about recognizing the voice of the Holy Spirit through prayer. Many of us have no, no idea how to talk to God let alone have confidence in how to hear or respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let's keep it real, y'all. Many of us struggle with starting a prayer life. Can we keep it real today? Can we keep it 100? Many of us struggle with how long to pray, what to say when we get to prayer. Many of us try to pray and get distracted. Let's, let's think about this for a second. Think about uh, what came to mind as I was uh, preparing was uh, if anybody out there's ever um, asked someone out in like middle school, for example, oh, gee, you know, you might do like a letter, uh, uh, a note. Will you go out with me? Yes or no. Or some of you had the bold courage to actually go up to a, 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 a someone and ask them, ask them out. And frankly, you just don't know what to say. And that's really, you know, how a lot of our prayer life is. We, we approach God, but have no idea what to say. My hope is that through this sermon, I, I could help help us build a framework for growing in our ability to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit through prayer. So I have this outline broken down in a few ways. Uh, starting off, I want to give you three elements of growing in prayer. And then after that. I want to give you three expectations of growing in prayer. So let's dig into this. Three uh, elements of growing in prayer. Now, the reality is there's obviously a lot more than three. There's hundreds, right, of different things that we can do uh, to continue to grow in prayer. But I want to kind of give you three that really um, have, have helped me in my own personal prayer life um, that I hope blesses you. Amen. So number one, uh, Number one, first element in, in growing in prayer. Number one is gratitude and adoration. Gratitude and adoration. Let's look at uh, Psalm 100. A lot of people are familiar with this verse. It reads, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness, come on, his faithfulness continues through all generations. I love this verse right here, Psalm 9 and verse 1. As we think about gratitude and adoration, it says, I will. Someone say, I will. I'm not sure about your mama or your cousin or, or your friend, but I don't know about you. But the, the, the psalmist said, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Adoration simply, when you talk about this kind of first element, adoration is simply adoring and praising God for his greatness and admitting our dependence on him. We need to admit that we need him. And when we declare his goodness and, and we, we have a heart full of gratitude and adoration, it, it helps us strengthen uh, our prayer life and, and, uh, and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Gratitude, simply sharing uh, uh, how grateful we are and appreciation towards God and for his many blessings. Really, when we think about this, uh, this point, simply, simply kind of put together, praying, uh, 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 prayers of gratitude and adoration is something that um, should encourage us to, to acknowledge the goodness of God, how great he is, 
and helping us believers remain humble as we thank God for all the things he has both done for us and who he is. Amen. Anyone. Element number two. And this is a one that uh, we probably need to be reminded all the time. Number two is agree with his truth. Let's look at Romans chapter eight. It says, therefore, brethren, verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Watch this, verse 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Someone say, I'm a child of God. Someone, I didn't hear you in the back. Our spirit that we are children of God, verse 17. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. This is one example of what we see uh, that this, the, the, the Holy Spirit agrees and bears witness with our spirit and reminds us. Come on. Someone needs to be reminded today that you are a child of God. When we think about our posture of prayer and, and coming to the Lord and uh, hearing his voice, we must come to a place of understanding of who we are in him. Many times, let's be real about it, church. Many times we are bombarded with lies from the enemy. We're bombarded with lies of the enemy who we're not, how much of a failure we are. Uh, we're bombarded with condemnation. And the enemy's always trying to tell us who we're not and why we're not uh, a, ch a child of God because of maybe some mistakes. I want to remind you today, agree with his truth. One of his, I mean, there's many truths that we see in the word. About who we are in him, that we're more than conquerors. That we're the head, not the tail. Come on, somebody. And that you are a child of God. Agree with his truth. Number three, and the last element uh, uh, kind of want to want to start us off with. Uh, number three is simply uh, ask for more. It's simple. You have not because you ask not. Come on. You have not because you ask not. Let's look at James chapter four. James chapter four and verse two. You want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have. Uh oh, this is the Bible, y'all. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from uh, from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Verse three. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what what will give you pleasure. Now, I can unpack that for a minute in and of itself, particularly in this day and age in this era of social media and, and, and our eyes being so distracted with what everybody else got and what, what everybody else is doing and how the, 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 the what they say, the, the grass is greener on the other side. And what we see here, the writer here is trying to uh, get us to uh, to re repurpose our focus. And to set our heart in the right place. And to simply uh, have the desire in the heart for the Lord. Again, we can ask for more when we're in prayer and we're seeking uh, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit and trying to get direction. I mean, I, I want you to be encouraged today, church, that you can ask for more. Go into that prayer closet and ask for more of God. Not just more things, more money and uh, a promotion or uh, more material things. Do we want more of him and him alone? Where are where's our heart at? Where's the desires and the desires of our heart? As I begin to transition from those first three elements again, uh, just to remind us real quick, uh, 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 gratitude and adoration. Agreeing with this truth and asking for more. 
Now, those are thinking three basic elements that have helped me in my prayer time with the Lord and, and, and tuning in to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's kind of setting my heart and setting that foundation right. Now, I want to uh, transition to three expectations of growing in prayer. Now, let's be real. Let's understand this. You know, prayer is not a one way conversation. Making sure that you give time for the Holy Spirit uh, uh, to, to speak and to for, for you to sit back and and relax and uh, uh, and listen to what the Lord is saying and, and what direction he may be giving you. He may give you scripture. He may show you people, may give you names to pray for. It's a variety of different things that happen when we're praying and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit through prayer. And so, again, I want to kind of give uh, three things that work, have I've experienced. Again, there's plenty of more. I love how um, uh, how uh, David mentioned it in his sermon. You know, he used the analogy of God having an accent. And for me, you know, if I if God had an accent, it'd be like, you know, God kind of speaks slang to me sometimes when I'm in my prayer closet and I'm in my prayer time. Sometimes God would say, keep it 100. Amen. And, and, and understanding and recognizing that uh, the spirit uh, bears witness with our spirit. It's, it, it sounds like us. And so three expectations I want to move to uh, that will help us grow in prayer. Number one, growing in stillness. Now, I want to I want to sit with this for a quick second, because st stillness is a very difficult thing to do today because we're so distracted. We got so many things going on. We you know, we we're so busy um, that it's really, really difficult to sit still. To grow in stillness. Psalm uh, uh, 46 and verse 10, we know it. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored through the world, throughout the world. Very familiar with uh, uh, we see in, in first Kings verse, uh, chapter 19. Look at verse 11. He says, then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord and behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still voice. Stillness. Last verse on this particular uh, theme, Psalm 131. It's a good one. Verse one. Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great. This is going to minister to somebody. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Ain't that good right there? Let me pause right there for a second. Let me just say that one more time. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. There's some things that are just out of your control. There are some things that are beyond what you and your human abilities can actually handle. And the psalmist is here reminding himself to not be concerned with those things that are too big or too massive for us to handle. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Verse two, instead, someone say instead. Instead of worrying and having a bunch of anxiety and concerning ourselves with things that we can't even uh, control. Instead, I have calmed and quieted myself. That's good. He said, instead of worrying about these things I can't handle, instead of that, I have calmed and quieted myself like a weaned child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a weaned child is my soul within me. Church, will you instead of having all the cares and worries of this world on your shoulders, on your heart, will you instead choose to quiet and calm yourself before the Lord? These are, again, expectations that could help us grow in prayer. And, you know, maybe just maybe we're not hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit because we're so distracted and busy listening to all the other noises that's out there. 
the sounds of the football game. Come on, it's Sunday. The sounds of uh, what's going to happen with these elections and, 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 and the news and uh, uh, the latest kind of COVID restrictions. We got a bunch of stuff that, that, again, is beyond what we can grasp. So I want to encourage somebody as you want to grow in prayer. Posture yourself to be calm and quiet within. Amen. Anybody? Come a couple more points and I'm going to get out your way for today. Number two, expectation. And, and these are again, these are things that I that I have come to expect to see or uh, experience in my time with prayer with God. Number two is growing in our hearing, growing in hearing. You heard last week from John John sermon, his big idea. God is always talking to us, but it's up to us to recognize his voice. And we see in the scriptures, it says he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Now, I, if I'm going to keep it real with you, me and my wife, so excited uh, to uh, shout out to my wife, by the way. Uh, this week, we're celebrating 15 years of being married and such a blessing to to know you, Catherine, to uh, to see both of us grow together and raise four children. It hasn't been easy by no means. And so I just want to take a time, take a moment to pause and say, I love you. I appreciate you. And I'm excited for many, many more years to come. Amen. Speaking of marriage and speaking of my wife, if I'm keeping real, we talk about hearing. Sometimes I'm not the best uh, listener or hearing sometimes what my wife got to say, especially after work or a long day. And she may have a couple of things to talk to me about. And I may appear that I'm listening, but I ain't really hearing. Come on. I'm guilty. And all the husbands said, amen. You know, guilty of sometimes not being fully uh, into a particular conversation. And my wife will like be talking and then she will get on my line and be like, man, you weren't even listening to me. And I, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And the truth of the matter is many of us are guilty of just not being good active listeners. And we need to hear what the spirit is saying to us. We need to learn how to be active hearers to what God is saying. Amen. It makes me think of a, one of my uh, one of my favorite movies. Excuse me. One of my favorite movies all time. Uh, uh, a white man can't jump. One of my favorite all time movies. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's all good. Uh, and you got Wesley Snipes talking to um, to his partner in crime in the movie. Uh, Billy Hoyle, if you remember. And he says, look, man, you can't you can listen to Jimmy, talking about Jimi Hendrix, the artist, but you can't hear him. There's a difference. Just because you're listening to him doesn't mean you are hearing him. And he's, he's breaking down to Billy Hoyle that um, he, he can't really hear the artist, Jimi Hendrix, and his music. Be, in, in the context of the movie, he's saying that you lack the cultural context or the understanding to really to get it, to, to hear it. You could listen, it, it, basically breaking it down. Hearing is simply listening with understanding. Hearing is simply listening with understanding. And in order for us to be better hearers of what the Holy Spirit is saying, a couple, couple quick bullet points I want to add to this is number one, listening with intention and being intentional that you are, are, are pressing in or as John John said last week, leaning in to actually hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And number two, listening to gain wisdom and understanding. Actually putting the effort to gain wisdom and understanding from the Lord. And so let's not just be uh, uh, ones like like Billy Hoyle that that's that's it's listening, but it's going over our heads. Let's not let's listen. But and let's also sit and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Last point, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out your way. Uh, grow in our seeing. So sometimes we're, we're, we're hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying and is speaking to us. And then in my experience, sometimes as we're in prayer, God will show us something. Look at John chapter five and verse 19. So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. So we see here, Jesus saw what God was doing and he followed what he saw. 
Now, I think about my own uh, prayer life. Sometimes when um, I'm in, in, in praying in the spirit and uh, I'm, I'm listening, I'm trying to hear what, what the Holy Spirit is, is, is doing or saying to me. Sometimes he will show me. He will, I, I will see literally a, a vision of a person uh, or a place um, or a particular uh, a thing that I should be praying for. Sometimes um, I, it's been general seeing different general things that uh, contain to, uh, are concerning of my life or maybe praying for others. And, and again, I want to I want to give you these things that uh, that hopefully you recognize. And as you're growing in, in prayer and hearing his voice, different ways that the Holy Spirit responds and uh, for us to grow. Uh, a quote says there's a quote by uh, Charles Fillmore. that says it like this. The power to see in the spirit is peculiar to faith. In its outer expression, this power is sight. Interiorly, it is that which perceives the reality of the substance of the spirit. Mental seeing is knowing. We mentally discern and have faith in what you do. Mental seeing is knowing. We mentally discern, have faith in what you do. We have to begin to see what the Lord is doing. See, is there is there a place you be, should be praying for a person again that that comes to mind? These are things that we should recognize as we grow in prayer and hearing his voice. Now, again, as we close, uh, kind of gave you the three um, elements, the three expectations. I ho hope it blessed you out there. And I want to close. And I was thinking about uh, some of these kind of tools or, again, this framework that I, I hope helps somebody out there. Um, I want to kind of end with uh, 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 the big idea for me when I think about um, these these principles is what do we do next? What's kind of action? And the big idea for me as I uh, thought about this and been praying about this is, is simply this. We cannot settle for simply hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. We must also respond. Oftentimes that uh, if we're just going to keep it 100, um, we we want to hear God. We want to see God. We want God to move. But we lack and we struggle in responding to his voice, responding and doing what he said for us to do in prayer. Um, and again, if, I'm, if I could keep it real recently, um, I saw I was praying and I saw something and uh, I. Uh, I felt the Lord tell me to do a particular thing and go help somebody out uh, that I saw on the street. And I got nervous. I'm going to be just be real with you. And I'm, I know I'm not the only one out there. I got a little nervous and I was like, man, I don't know how to how to how to reach out or how to say it. And and I just kind of I stumbled on it. And, I, and to be real with you, I, I, I wasn't obedient. I, I felt the Lord tell me to go for it. And then I was like, uh, I kind of second guess myself. And so I want to challenge us to, again, not to, to not simply heal, uh, settle for hearing the voice, but responding to his voice. Last verse for the day. James chapter one, verse 22. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey. It is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then, then, someone say then, God will bless you for doing it. City Life Church, family, folks that's out there, Let's not just be hearers of the word. Let's challenge ourselves to be doers. All throughout uh, the scriptures, you'll see that writers talk about obeying the voice of the Lord, keeping his commandments. And for us, as we think about growing and hearing his voice through prayer, let's also uh, take it a step further and challenge ourselves to while we're praying to respond to what the Lord is saying.
what the Lord is doing. And, and I'm going to go back to that first ver verse I, um, I used in the beginning of, the, of, of today's sermon, Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to close it out. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord, Jesus, and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. Again, a lot of these points are going to sound familiar from today's sermon. I pray for you constantly asking God, the glorious father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight. So that you might grow. Someone say grow so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are in rich and glorious inheritance. Verse 19, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power, the Holy Spirit, come on, for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is a spirit that is speaking to you, that's quickening your mortal body. And I pray is encouraging you to grow deeper in your time in prayer. And your relationship with him. And again, as I said a second ago, that we will res then respond and do all the things he called us to do. Amen. Man, City Life, it's been a minute. I hope you were blessed by this word today. Uh, it's good to be back in a, in a pulpit. I hope you uh, are encouraged today and are growing in your uh, prayer life and hearing his voice through prayer. Uh, thank you for your time. God bless you. Hey, what an amazing word. Pastor Keys, you are a blessing, man. What an encouragement to us. And isn't that amazing? The whisper that we hear from the Holy Spirit. You can be praying to God and he actually speaks to us. What an awesome word that was and what an amazing service today. Yeah, no, I'm loving this series. And to everybody that maybe this is the first time that you're being a guest with us, or if you just made the decision to follow Jesus, we wanna hear about it. Hey, maybe you can comment on the comments below or even better, text CLC Connect to the number 97,000. That way we can send you some info towards you and you can become a part of our family. That's what we're all about. That's what we're passionate about. We love helping people take their next steps. Shout out to Elizabeth or Betchy in Portuguese. Who got dunked today. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Water baptism, that's the next step. And uh, man, we've had so many people just sign up saying, I wanna take the next step. I wanna go public with my faith. So if you haven't been water baptized yet, Pastor David, how do people sign up? Hey, you can go to our website at citylifesf.com slash baptism. Just sign up and then we'll send you all the info as well. It's great. Or just click the link that our hosts are posting right now and we can get you registered that way as well. And then if you haven't joined one of our care groups yet, man, care groups, that's where we get down. They've been fire. People are connecting through Zoom, but then there's also some groups that are meeting in person now. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. Yeah. How do I, people sign up? Hey, you can go on our website. You can go on our app. It's super easy. Again, just our website slash groups. You're going to see the link below as well. But this is the best way to do community. And we're covering the same topic of our series, Whisper, Hearing the Voice of the Holy Spirit. So the idea is, man, let's not do life alone when we can do it together. Together we're better. And finally, as we wrap things up, man, listen, praise God that God is still on the throne. He's still moving, doing great things. The restrictions are beginning to lift here in San Francisco, so we're able to do a few more things. We wanna encourage you, if you have any prayer requests, send them to us. Let us know how we can partner with you in prayer. But every Wednesday night at 7.30, man, we have our Pursuit Prayer Night. Um, we have a limited uh, amount of people that we can allow in person, and uh, but you can also tune in online with us. We would love for, for you to join us and be a part of this prayer movement that God is birthing through our house during this time. Absolutely. We believe that prayer changes everything. All right, folks, this is all that we got for today. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you have an awesome week. Go Niners. Let's go, baby. We love you guys. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next time. Peace.
From the moment I wake up From the moment I close my eyes All the glory belongs to you, Jesus All the glory belongs to you, Jesus. I give it all. All the glory belongs to you, Jesus. Cause you have saved my soul. All the glory belongs to you, Father. Oh, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. And
deserve 